My name is Jerry Ford, chairman and founder of the Music Hall of Fame. I have some great co-chairmen, um, Randall Hazelbaker, which you'll be hearing or meeting, and our newest one, Diane Pridgen, class of 67, and I believe Randall told me 76. Did I have it right? Yes. My memory slipped a little bit, so anyway. Uh, how we're going to do this, we're going to start with the the oldest first, or the first in the age. And uh, at this time, I would need the one for Hoopengarner, a name of Hoopengarner. And our presenter will be Diane Pridgen, and I'll let her tell you the story. Thank you. It's with great pleasure that I uh, induct Doug Hoopengarner into the Music Hall of Fame. He was my teacher. And uh, if you can imagine, 65 years ago, a little eight-year-old and nine-year-old were part of his cherub choir. And uh, his week was full. On Sundays, he had the chancel choir and this little cherub choir that practiced on Fridays after he'd put in a whole week of school at 5.30. Um, and he began his teaching career in Coldwater in 1958. He graduated from Michigan State in 1957. He was in the um, singers there, the statesmen, a select group of males, and uh, also in the larger chorus. So um, Coldwater was really fortunate to have him make his living teaching in our system. Uh, he was hired at the middle school, and then he expanded to the high school. The students here, I was so thrilled to hear the balladeers. This is the gentleman that started that organization. And uh, <laughs> we want to hear this, so we're going to go sit down. <laughs> so at the um, point of him needing another course to offer, the administrators asked him to create one, and he chose select voices to be an ensemble. And did they start out with 12? 12. 12 was the number, and it was a prestigious group. Um, we sang in the community, and uh, it was an honor to be a balladeer, and, and I know it still is today. So um, he has a legacy in, in them. Um, so then he went on to teach in Portage, and I thought my school music career was ended. But, <laughs> but indeed, it wasn't. And I know that Doug influenced many students to continue and become music teachers themselves. So I thank you for that. It is indeed an honor to be here. Um, and I want to thank the uh, committee for uh, asking me to be a part of this uh, select group. As you will see on your uh, uh, part there, the f f man who uh, kind of helped me along there was a man by the name of Curry. His name is in the, uh, as your first uh, inductee into this uh, Hall of Fame. He was, uh, he was the band director here at the high school at the time. And um, I was at the middle school, and uh, he heard my middle school choir and, and, and saw what I was doing, and he asked me that if I wouldn't, uh, uh, he, he wouldn't step aside. He was directing both the band and the, the choir at the time, and he said he asked to step aside, and he said, asked Mr. Dennis if he wouldn't, if I, he, uh, he wouldn't ask me to come over to the high school, and I was very grateful to do that. <clears throat> the Balladeers was kind of a uh, I want to say kind of a, a, a toss in. I was teaching music Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on the for the choir. And Tuesday and Thursday, I was sitting there not doing anything. Mr. Dennis didn't like that. So he said, uh, uh, you've got to find something to do. And I said, well, there are a number of my 
uh, students are sitting down there in the study hall. Can I get them? And he said, sure. So down I went and I uh, picked out the first 12 kids that I knew that, that were in the, the uh, uh, Cardinal Choir at the time. And I asked, and I asked them to come down and uh, uh, be in the, in the, in the uh, choir room. And so we sat there and uh, we said, well, what can we call ourselves? And so the uh, names were tossed around, tossed around. And finally, uh, one of the members, a gal by the name of Kathy Tarr. And some of you know Kathy Tarr. And uh, she's a lovely, lovely gal, lovely, lovely alto. And she says, why don't we call ourselves the Balladeers? Bingo! We said, that's it. And so we started out there. As a teacher, you look at, you open a door. You kind of take that door and say, open it up to the students that are there. And uh, my door was for the choral sound. Some of the students uh, wanted to, uh, didn't know what the choral sound was going to be like. And I'm hoping that the door that I opened for them and for all the students there, I hope that the door that I opened for the choral sound was for them. And I indeed thank you for the, uh, the honor of being here. One of the things that we did was to make an, a record. And I brought it, I was looking through some of my old records and I saw this and I said, oh, I gotta take that along. It was called An Invitation to the Choral Sound by the Coldwater uh, Music Department. And we made this to uh, raise some money for uh, things that we wanted to have in the choir program. And so we had this program, and so it's kind of a antique and a kind of a thing that, uh, the, that we cherish very much. Thank you for this honor, and I really appreciate it very, very, very much. I'll need a little help on organizing me with the plaques. And the next one we're going to have is the one you're going to introduce. Did I bring the plaques? I got them. Somebody's got them. I got them. Okay. I've been bailed out. At this time, Randall Hazelbaker. He will be our presenter. Thanks, Jerry. Our next inductee to the Music Hall of Fame is Mr. Delbert Walling. Uh, Delbert grew up in a slower paced world. Born in the mid 1950s, life seemed to move a little slower and everyone seemed to stay connected to their families differently than today's fast-paced world. His father's side of the family was very musical and played many instruments. Delbert began playing the guitar at age nine. He learned to love music by watching his father and other family members as they gathered to play music and sing. He joined his first rock band at the age of 13 and started his career as a full-time musician. Throughout the middle school and high school, he earned spending money playing school dances and parties. In the early 1970s, the group Crosswind was formed and they performed five to seven nights a week throughout Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio for about three years. This was a great way for Delbert to develop his musicianship and his chops. In 1978, Delbert attended the Guitar Institute of Technology, currently now called Musicians Institute, in Hollywood, California. Delbert enjoyed the long and exciting days at GIT, having time to, in his time of his life, studying with such greats as Howard Roberts, Don Mock, and Howard Alden. During the 1980s and 90s, Delbert spent time in the studio performing for many radio and television commercials. Delbert started teaching guitar at the age of 16 and has been teaching ever since. He currently has a te teaching studio here in Coldwater and enjoys sharing his love for guitar with his students ranging from age five to 75. During the past few years, Delbert has geared his interests and performances towards the great songwriters of the day and from the past. 
A great song will never let you down and will always have an effect on the audience. He enjoys performing singer-songwriters music and enjoys arranging and performing for pure joy of making music and meeting new fans. Whether it's making music with friends sitting around a campfire, recording in the studio, working with students on concepts of learning music, or performing in front of a small, intimate audience, all the way up to a full-blown theater or an outdoor show, Delbert loves it all. Delbert continues to perform regularly in a variety of duos, trios, and quartets. Please help me welcome Mr. Delbert Walling. Thank you, Randall. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Diane and Randall and Jerry for uh, and all the committee and people who voted for whoever is going to be voted in this year. Uh, it's very nice. I do appreciate it. I think Randall pretty much uh, covered everything right there. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to thank the fact that my parents were uh, working class people. They worked hard. Uh, but even at an early age, you know, I learned that they had five children to uh, support and they worked hard, but they really never complained. I didn't really hear a lot of complaining around the house about how tough work was and it was actually really hard for them. As I became an adult, I realized uh, how hard that situation was. But the cool thing was they always had a really great stereo, really big speakers with a lot of power, and they had quite a record collection from uh, the early crooners and jazz singers and uh, all the folk trios and quartets from the 50s, lots of doo-wop music, you know, Sam Cooke, the singer, most of the Motown records, and a lot of surf guitar, blues records, a little bit of everything. And my father and parents actually really enjoyed it, and all five of us kids loved it. And uh, so I'd like to thank them for having such a great stereo and allowing us to touch the records and use it. <laughs> they were pretty kind to us. Uh, I got into my first group when I was 13, and that was a thrill because uh, the other members were 15 and 16, and when you're that young, somebody that's two or three years older than you, it's kind of like, well, at first it's scary and intimidating, but they were actually good musicians involved here at Coldwater High School in the band program, percussionist, and uh, the bass player played sax in the school band. And they knew a whole lot more than I did, but I had a really nice Fender amp and a Gibson guitar, and I took a shower every day and showed up to rehearsal on time. <laughs> that made a real difference. So they uh, included me and helped me a lot. So I learned a lot about teamwork, and I learned a lot about teaching because they, they were teaching me at the rehearsals because I could only learn part of the song. I wasn't reading notes, I was learning by ear. So that was a great experience, and I've kind of kept those thoughts with me as I continue to learn today and continue to teach. In fact, I just got out of teaching about an hour ago in my private studio. So. I'd like to thank my friends, my fellow musicians. I'd also like to thank uh, Robin Walling, my wife. We've been married going on 51 years. Not always the easiest thing to be married to a musician in the 60s and 70s, but we've had a lot of fun, and music's still really important to us. And uh, I'd like to thank our son, Ian Walling. He's a fine musician and percussionist, and he himself, he's played all over Europe and across the United States many times, and has been in some really great groups. Uh, and I'd like to thank Coldwater High School, all the teachers I had. I, I think through music, I learned, well, I realized that I, I was really never bored, and, I, and I've heard that a lot in the last 40 or 50 years, people, not only children or teenagers, but even adults, go, and there's nothing to do in town, or 
I'm really bored today. I'm just sick of this. There's nothing going on. I, I have just never been bored. I, I don't say that. I don't feel it. And I think a big part of it is music. Uh, I have learned to shut music off now because it, you know, I usually get so hyper and into it, I couldn't shut my mind down. So I can totally relax and be really quiet, maybe not even leave the house for two days. But I'm not bored. I'm just enjoying the experience of life. So once again, I'd like to thank my fellow musicians that I have played with and musicians I'm currently playing with. And uh, I'd like to thank the board once more for having me. I do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give him a big hand. He's a good musician. <laughs> thank you. Brothers. I'm going to be the presenter, but I want to give the credit to David uh, Carmen that uh, was on our uh, committee, and he helped us this year, and, and he prepared this, uh, but he couldn't be here. So I'm going to be the presenter, and I start with this. Gary was, we're talking about Gary Flegel, band director, and this is posthumously, and his, one of his daughters is here to receive that award. But we'll start with this presentation. Gary was a dedicated and talented music teacher for the Coldwater Community Schools for over 35 years, receiving his music degree from Lebanon Valley College. He then spent some time as lead singer to the Gospel Echoes Singing Group, traveling to hundreds of churches, performing and spreading his faith. This faith led him to want to be a teacher and brought him to Coldwater in the late 1970s to start teaching and I believe that was 1977, I think. Um, he, he was married and had three daughters who were the center of his life. He became very active in the Coldwater Free Methodist Church. Gary was an avid sports follower. He loved baseball and hockey, and he also was an Eagle Scout. He had a real heart for music. He came to Coldwater as a middle school choir teacher. In the early 80s, the district was having financial issues and made some cuts to the music program and ended up asking Gary to become the high school band director. He did a wonderful job in keeping the program afloat and doing well. They even performed, this is great, in the Dallas Cotton Bowl Parade during this time. Boy, that is famous. In 1984, the district was able to hire a new person to teach high school band, which allowed Gary to move back to the middle school where his real love was, to be the band and choir director. He spent 23 years in that role. And the band director that came in was David Carmen. Gary's ability to connect with that age student allowed him to have a wonderful impact on the youth of our community. His way of joking with the students and his storytelling while maintaining discipline was a special talent. He organized many, many events for the kids, including lock-ins, lock oh, that's interesting, and go-kart uh, putt-putt parties. Well, he might have done that outdoor Ford really mini putt. The music program flourished during this time with large numbers of students and high-quality performances. His positive impact to the Coldwater schools is still talked about by his past students and he is the reason we are inducting him into the Coldwater High School Music Hall of Fame. At this time, I'd like to have his daughter, Jessica, who was able to be here, to come forward. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. That's me. That's your baton. Thank you. You don't want me to direct. Okay. Thank you very much. I can't see any of you, so that makes it a little easier. Um, on behalf of my dad and just his memory and honoring him, he would have been so proud about this. And then he would have sloughed it off and said, I don't like the attention to be on me. Um, we kind of laughed tonight because people were like, you know, how many people here are we going to know? 
And how many of you knew my dad? We couldn't go anywhere growing up without seeing someone. We'd be in the middle of Florida and we'd hear, Mr. Flegel. You're like, are you kidding me? Like, we're supposed to be away. But what an honor for him. I so wish that he had um, the pleasure of knowing that this was going to be given to him. But we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Well deserved. Well deserved. At this time, I will have Diane to come forward. You're presenting this one for Justine? No, I'm doing Chelsea. Oh, Randall, did I have you doing Justine? One of us will do it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yep. We'll go ahead and do that. Thank you. I thought she was going to be not able to be here because in your program, so this works out good. Great. I'm, I'm having help. I'll explain it later. <laughs> good evening. It is my great honor to present um, the Music Hall of Fame inductee and my friend and colleague, Justin, Justine Hostetler. Justine Hostetler is a 1992 graduate of Coldwater High School where she participated in the Cardinal Marching Band and Symphonic Band. In 1996, she received her BA from Spring Arbor College with a major in trumpet and piano performance and an associate's degree in piano pedagogy. Justine returned to Coldwater in 1997 and began her private trumpet and piano studio, teaching over 200 students in the last 26 years, including many of my own students. Justine has truly enjoyed her collaboration with the music program at Coldwater Schools over this time. She has accompanied band students from LMS and CHS at Solo and Ensemble for many years. Justine has also enjoyed being the choir accompanist for Coldwater Schools for 17 years, working with seven different choir directors. Since 2014, she has worked with the CHS musicals as a music director and pit orchestra conductor. Ten fun years of shows. As a trumpet player, Justine has played with the Branch County Community Band, Sauk River Ramblers, Kalamazoo Concert Band, CHS Musical Productions, Branch County Community Theater Musicals, and Tibbetts Summer Theater. Justine currently divides her time between teaching 28 private lesson students and serving as the worship leader at Hope Church. Congratulations, Justine. Come on up here. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations, well deserved. Thank you. I look at all the other distinguished recipients of this award and I wonder what I'm doing here, but thank you so much for honoring me. And I just wanted to say a couple of words about a couple of the other inductees tonight and how they've intersected with my life musically. Um, first, Mr. Flegel. I never had the chance to be in Mr. Flegel's class at school because by the time I moved to Coldwater, I was in high school. But Gary and his family attended the same church we did and our, our families became good friends. And Gary, um, because he knew I was a musician, uh, I played trumpet and piano, he never stopped encouraging me to make music. He was always on me to practice, to practice harder, practice more to try things that I hadn't tried before. And looking back on it, one of the things that he did for me that I most appreciate was that at church, he asked me to accompany him. Occasionally, he would sing solos at church. And I was just a kid in high school, and we had a really accomplished pianist at our church that he could have asked to play for him. But he had a heart for students, and so he asked me, and not only did he ask me to play for him, he gave me music that was not all written out. And as back then, um, a classically trained piano player, I was a strictly, I need all the notes written out <laughs> kind of person. And so Gary helped me, he was the first one to help me understand how to learn to play from chords on the piano, which was a scary thing for me. And how to, how to fill in things. Um, I would play for him and we'd get to the end of a section and he'd say, well, why don't you break up the chord and do an arpeggio like this? And he, he would show me. And you know, the light bulbs kind of came on for me. 
And so I appreciate the chance he gave me. I had no idea that that would be the first of my long, long years of accompanying people and how much I would enjoy it. But Gary took a chance on a student when he could have asked somebody that played far better than me, and I'll always appreciate that. And then um, Chelsea Melcher, um, she was one of my piano students, and she started when she was in elementary school, a bright-eyed, precocious, beautiful little girl. Um, she just soaked up music like a sponge and was a joy to teach. And she moved on to greater things than piano playing, as you'll hear um, shortly. You'll get to enjoy some of her music. But it brings me a lot of joy just to know that I was one of those little stepping stones in her musical journey. Um, the last thing I want to say is, I think a lot of us musicians, when we get started, we get started playing because we love music and we want to make music. And then we get to a certain um, skill level and we figure out that our music is good enough that other people might want to listen to it. And that's pretty cool to get to share music that brings other people joy. But then I was like a lot of musicians that got to the place that said, okay, I love making music, but I can't make a living making music. What else can I do with music? And the logical thing for me and many musicians is, well, you could teach. And so I started teaching students even back when I was in high school. And I had no idea then that I would look now at teaching as one of the greatest joys that I have with music. It's beautiful to be able to perform myself, and I'll always value that. But I honestly can say it's so rewarding to be able to help somebody else find that joy in their life to be able to enjoy music and to see the light bulbs come on for them. And I know that long after I'm gone, people will forget the music that I made, but there will still be my students who will be making music and teaching others to make music, and that brings me a lot of joy. So I'm so grateful to my students in the past and in the present who let me be a part of their life. I'm so grateful to Katie and Aaron and Jake who continue to let me um, help teach the students in the cold water choirs and bands. It means so much to me. Thank you. I had the pleasure of realizing what a good talent she had. I was in the Brands County Community Band, and I wasn't of her caliber, and I was so impressed with it, never knew the piano skills. And uh, I'm, then I found out later by going to a lot of her father's uh, free Methodist church uh, programs that it, I was impressed with by the father, who also had the impression, did well with uh, the, uh, Gary Flegel. So I had a lot of connections, so I'm so happy and, and uh, I'm glad she was able to come out. At this time, I would like, uh, make sure I've got my program right, I can I have you now, Diane? <laughs> Come on up. You're the presenter for the next person. Okay. Excuse me. I'm so pleased to recognize Chelsea Hart Melcher. Um, she was a student of mine, and I've kept in touch with her. She went to Central. Well, at Coldwater, she distinguished herself in all the opportunities that she had with music. And then she went to study at Central. And there she met Paul, her husband, who's an accomplished pianist and composer. Um, they actually performed for the Smith Memorial Concert a couple years ago. It was thrilling. Um, She's known in the Columbus area as a sweetheart soprano. She's sung all kinds of arias and operas and won competitions. Um, oh, I didn't say she graduated from Coldwater in 2008. She's very young. Um, so her studio now is called the Red School of Music. You can find it online. She has about 250 students. 
Um, she's a vocal coach. She's also known for helping those with performance anxieties. And she's studied that extensively and gives master classes. Uh, she actually presented, she and her husband, a master class to the area high schools here when they performed the Smith Memorial Concert. Um, so let's call her up. She would like to perform for you, Climb Every Mountain. I did want to say I'm extremely humbled and grateful for the chair and the board um, for choosing me for this. Thank you so much. And of course, it's such an honor to have four of my teachers that are also in the Hall of Fame. Um, Mrs. Perdun, my, my first music teacher, also staying in touch. And Mr. Carmen, Mr. Flegel had huge impacts on my life. And Justine. Uh, host Adler. and so Justine actually invested in me she gave me she was my private lessons teacher and she gave me a scholarship and she just felt something on her heart and I'll never forget that um, and also our our family uh, my family has been so supportive my parents especially and my grandmother actually, we named the music school after her because she was, she just loved music and she was a huge influence on my life. And her name was uh, Ruth Evelyn Dreyer, R-E-D is where the red comes from. So I just wanted to say I'm extremely humbled and grateful for this opportunity.
Is that going to cost me? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Let's give a hand for all these inductees and their memory and the other one that couldn't be here. I'm going to give you a couple of words. I'm, I'm going to retire as chairman and uh, from being on the committee. Um, but I want to tell you how it started. There's a little story, and it'll, it'll tie in with Hoop and Garner. Uh, when Dr. He was called a doctor later, Chet Curry, his last year was 59. That was the class that I graduated in. He came to every reunion that we did every five years. So if we're from 59, it would either be a nine or a four. I think I remember that. And uh, in 2004, I said to him, I think we were at the Oaks. The, uh, the reunion was down in the basement, and we had an entertainer. And I said to Dr. Curry, he was one of my favorite teachers, and I said to him, I'm going to, I want to see something done to recognize you and other people on music. And he said to me, Jerry, he said, you better hurry. And I, I figured it had something to do with his health. So in 05, I was able to get it done, and, and I'll make this short. Um, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Uh, am I going to cry? Probably. Um, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I talked somebody into, oh boy, and I got in trouble for that. I, got, I talked him into the basketball court. So we had it that year in the basketball court. Look on your program. If you didn't get one, make sure you get one. We got extra ones. And, uh, it, and later, I, Coach Kellogg said to me, shouldn't you be doing this on your own? <laughs> so, meaning that, the athletics. And then we built into David Carmen helped me and others, and it just grew. And I just want to tell you that it's been a wonderful experience, and it was a wonderful honor to have done it for Mr. Curry. So Mr. Hoop and Gardner, Gardner you mentioned his name, so it ties it all in together. So I'll say guy, goodbye and farewell, and hopefully you appreciate what we've done. And now I'll tell you who the new chairman is, this short guy, I mean tall guy. Stand up, please. Recognize the new chairman of the Music Hall of Fame. And this young lady, class of 67, if you would please stand and face the audience. I want to say I wish we'd have found her a lot sooner. She is wonderful. And now, for a new surprise, I would like this lady right here has agreed to be on the committee, and uh, she will be helping us even further. So give her a hand for being the new surprise. And I'll, I'll end with this statement that I know Katie, and, I, and I've had a lot of cooperation with uh, the, the uh, uh, memory loss, part of the reason. And uh, the, uh, I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, we need to get, instead of the small plaque out on the wall, which you don't even know is there, but at least we have it. And I'm going to get it, these five put onto that as my final act. And, and Katie's going to help us with it, I'm sure. And then where we're going to get it on the wall like we did for the athletics. I like athletics, you like athletics, but we like this music, and after what you've heard tonight, oh my gosh. Thank you for your support all these years. Thank you.